Right guys, so today I want to talk about this guy. His name's Charlie. He's a Irish soft coat Wheaton Terrier and he's uh, five and a half. Um, unfortunately, today's Charlie's last day at the farm. It's a very sad day for Charlie. He's been one of our originals right from the beginning and he's about to get on a plane and go to Switzerland to live. So he's been living with us for the last uh, probably six weeks or so while waiting for a flight. And it's a sad day. Today's last day at the farm. So a little bit emotional day for, for both him and I, I think. I don't think he realises yet, but he's getting on the bus this afternoon. But uh, Charlie is one of the originals, the very first. So um, even before we started farm trips, when farm trips was just an idea, uh, Charlie was the very first dog on our waiting list for when the farm trip started. Weren't you mate? Yeah, good boy. And he used to do that, he used to lick my ear every morning when I used to go pick him up when I'd drive in the morning. I'd say hello to him and he'd get in the cage and then he'd turn around and lick my ear to say, yeah, I missed you Luke. Wouldn't you mate? Yeah, that was our little thing. So Charlie, a little bit about Charlie, he's, he, when he first started actually, this is funny. When he first started, believe it or not, Charlie used to run around crazy the first part of the morning and he'd go and then find a place to sleep. And he used to sleep in one of these uh, cubby houses at the old farm and just take himself off for a bit of a nana nap uh, after lunch. And then he'd spring back to life again for the afternoon. But, um, you know, that's a little characteristic trait that he used to have. And, he, you know, he'd be, his best mates, you know, were Bandit and Jack. And... Uh, he'd just disappear and then it would just be Bennett and, and Jack there. I'm like, where's Charlie? And he'd be snoozing in the sun somewhere. So he used to like a little Arvo kip. Not now though, he's built up his endurance and there's no sleeping for Charlie outside of night time. Unless it's in the morning cuddles with Elle on the couch. He sometimes goes back to bed then, don't you mate? So the first thing that stood out to us with Charlie was his ability to climb and balance. So he's very, very skilled climber and he can climb onto pretty much anything. He does walk along the handrails and that kind of thing. But where it stood out was um, when he first started to conquer all the equipment. So um, the, you, you probably would have remembered the hay bale castles that we used to put up. And I used to try and build them. Uh, at first it was only quite small, but they got bigger and bigger and uh, they increased with difficulty as well. Uh, as they got bigger and Charlie was always the first dog to the top. He was always the first one to conquer it. Uh, no matter how wobbly that hay bale was, uh, he'd get up there, balance on it and just say, yep, done this. And he's, he's always been king of the hay bale castle. For a while there, I used to call him our resident mountain goat because he was very, very impressive. Um, actually, in the old farm, and that's where these tyres and the balance beams came from, was built for Charlie because he loved to climb, he loved to balance, he loved to walk along uh, the top of things. And, and so he, he was the, the thought process behind some of the equipment. And, uh, and he absolutely loves getting up. That's why I'm sitting up on the tractor today, not on the hay bale, because this is where Charlie sits and stands. He's usually here at the back of, in the background of every party. Uh, you know, if he's not here, he's, he's standing on the seat there, so. Um, he likes to be at the highest point, don't you mate? So that's one thing about Charlie, is his ability to climb and he always likes to be on the top. So when, when Charlie first started coming and the farm just began, um, there was a little bit of work involved to, to teach the, the dogs the rules and a couple of the um, new dogs that were maybe a little bit um, cheeky, Charlie would be my 2IC. So Charlie knew the rules, he knew what we stood for and, and what wasn't allowed. And if I was trying to get one of the new dog's attention to say, hey, settle down, uh, Charlie would back me up and he'd run over there and bark at them as if to say, cut it out, guys. This isn't, this isn't allowed at the farm. And so he got the 2IC badge for quite a while there. Uh, he, used to, he, he knew exactly what was going on and if someone was misbehaving, he would say, oi, this isn't allowed. Wouldn't you, buddy? And so uh, sometimes he would be the alarm. He'd start barking, like, what's he barking at? Uh, sure enough, see, see something that wasn't, wasn't part of the rules at the farm. So Charlie definitely wore a sheriff's badge for a while there at the beginning, just to help me with the workload, didn't you, mate? Charlie's going to Switzerland, uh, but he's actually going back to Switzerland. It's originally where Charlie came from. 
Uh, so he's originally a snow dog. He, he loved to roll around in the snow and bury his face in the snow. Um, and we believe that's why he does it in the sand. Uh, you often see him bury his whole face and head in the sand and um, you know that's actually why we got so many sand pits originally at the first farm and also this one because he loves it absolutely loves it every time there's a new sand pile he will dig and do little snow angels in as best he can um, and so I'm very interested to see some photos of his first snow overseas because I'd love to see him bury his face in it like he does on the sand and, and, and reminisce about those times. So he, he uh, started off in Switzerland, came to Australia when he was about two, um, and now he's going back to Switzerland again. We've known Charlie for almost four years now, about around four years, and uh, so he's actually watched or been with us while our kids have grown up. Uh, and one thing about Charlie is he's very, very sweet with kids, loves them. Uh, he just really takes on a bit of a nurturing role. And when we used to bring Elle down to the farm when she was learning to walk, Charlie would always stand by Elle. So he almost took on a little bit of a mother goose role where, um, you know, while Elle was taking her first steps across the steps and across all the things, Charlie would sort of take her under her wing and say, yep, I'm, I'm with you here. And it'd always be just one step behind and sniffing her ear or licking the back of her head or, you know, he's always been really, really sweet with kids. He's a, a, a very sensitive and caring dog when it comes to children. Um, and, you know, with both our, our girls, he's he's been there, you know, playing with them right from the beginning. And, um, you know, he right from the beginning of, he was there on the very first farm trip and he's been coming up, you know, multiple times each week ever since. And he's always holidayed with us whenever he's been away on holidays. Um, and <laughs> Sam's just fallen in a hole there. <laughs> Thanks, Coda. <laughs> and uh, so Charlie, although we love all the dogs, Charlie really feels like he's part of the family. He, he's been there through all of it. Um, he thinks he's part of the family. He thinks that the girls are his siblings and, you know, he really looks after them. Um, and he, he's been a part of the furniture right from the beginning, haven't you, buddy? Charlie was the, the first dog to sort of take on uh, the do whatever you want routine on the holidays. So he would just figure out what the routines were of the day. He'd figure out what he wanted to be involved in and what he wanted to go back to the house and chill out for. And we just used to let him do it. He understood the routines. He's understood when all the activities were going. Uh, and if he wanted to be a part of it, he'd come straight out and be a part of it. But if he felt like he wanted to rest or chill out and uh, go back to the couch, we let him do it. So he, he created the, the create your own farm experience style for some of the long-term holiday guests that we do. Um, Bandit quickly adopted the, the similar thing, but um, Charlie was, was one of the first, weren't you, mate? Well, the first. Hello, Ellie. Hi, darling. So for Charlie, what a lot of you probably haven't or haven't seen is uh, his routine. You probably noticed that uh, I think for most of this year and even last year, he would come up and stay for two days every week uh, and he'd sleep at the farm. So half the half his week at the farm, half at home. And he quickly worked out that the routine at the farm for him was for 24 hours, not just a, uh, a normal day. So one of his favorite activities at the farm is not while all the other dogs are here, it's actually once they all go home and then um, we have the kids playing in the yard and uh, go for quad bike rides around the property. That's when he likes to come alive. Uh, and he used to save himself through the day, so he still had energy to run around the property in the afternoon whenever I had work to do, fixing fences, or that's when he would like to, to come alive and, and make sure he had some stores of fuel in the tank so that uh, so he didn't miss out on those activities. And they were more intimate where there might only be in a small group of dogs or sometimes only just him that were staying over. So. They were, they were Charlie's, I think, they were Charlie's favourite times at the farm where everyone else went home and it was just the farm crew that's staying overnight. Hey, mate. 
So if you're a long time follower, you would have seen a lot of videos of Charlie arriving at the farm, pristine, white, fluffy coat, and then within five minutes, just completely covered in mud, drenched, looking just completely disheveled. Wait. What and it was his favorite now? thing to do. As soon as he arrived what after a groom, look at, look at this, look at this state of you. he would find the muddiest hole and just wallow in it and bury his head and he would completely be a different color. And I just used to be completely shocked and so apologetic at the beginning, just saying, I'm so sorry, but your dog is not coming back the way <laughs> that he arrived. Uh, but you know, it, it's, it's his part of his personality. He loves doing it. It's his favorite thing to do. And um, you know, he does it every time and we allow him to do it. And there's a very good chance that uh, on a wet, rainy week, Charlie will get three to four baths a day, purely because he does not get allowed in the house <laughs> looking like that. So he gets a big hose down and, and dry and he goes in the house. Next time he goes out and goes to the toilet, he will come back looking horrendous again. It's like, Charlie, you are not getting on my couch looking like that. So it's again, back to the Hydra bath. So very uh, common practice for him on a weekend, a rainy weekend, for him to get quite a few bars a day. He, he just loves finding muddy puddles and burying himself in it, burying himself in it. It's Charlie. So Bandit and Charlie were both here the very first farm trip that we ever did. And they'd been coming on the same day, or well, the same days, three days a week, ever since the start. So. Um, you know, these guys are very familiar with each other. I would definitely say that they're, you know, they're the closest mates of all the dogs at the farm because they've pretty much known these, each other more than any other dog. And, and Jack was a part of that, but unfortunately Jack passed away. Um, so it's, it's sad all round, isn't it? Because Bandit's going to lose his mate as well as us. And, uh, but Charlie's going to go on to have a new couple of adventures overseas, hey? Get to see some snow, mate. I'm excited for you. I reckon you're gonna love it. Oh boy. So yeah, the, the duo's getting broken up, hey mate? Not forever though, eh? Yeah, good boy, mate. Yeah, you still got me. You still got me, mate. I'm... Oh boy, mate. Oh boy. Sad times. Last day, mate. Hey. Sad all round. We're going to miss you, mate. Hopefully, this isn't goodbye forever. This is, we'll see you again someday. Uh, but he might have a few more years on him when we do. Hey, mate. And I'm told you may even have a little brother or sister by then, too. Good boy, mate. We'll always have a spot on the bus for you. Don't worry. Well, this is Charlie. See you, mate. It's been a while since you've been in one of these, hey? See you, buddy. See you, mate. Oh, good boy. I know, I'll miss you, hey? I'll miss you. Good boy, mate. Good boy, I'll miss you, buddy.